Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and this is going to be the first of a couple videos in a tutorial session, and this is going to be dedicated towards people who are part of my Discord channel, who will be the only ones that will have the links to get this stuff, so if you want any of the links for the stuff that's going to be used in the tutorial, then feel free to join my Discord channel. If you don't know where it is and don't know how to get to it, Drop me a comment, and I'll send you, I'll put the link in there as well. But it is also posted in one of my other videos. So, moving right along, what I have done is I have uploaded to Google Drive a project file. And what I would want you to do to get started with this tutorial series is to actually go to that link, download it. It's pretty respectable file size. The... I think it's called Weapon Tutorial, and that's what we're going to be covering is being able to add weapons to your player, switch between weapons, storing them, using them, and creating all the aspects around the weapons. Now, what you're going to find is it's a zip file, and the zip file itself is 844 megabytes. I'm sorry, that's the size it came out to be. Um, but all you're going to have to do is download it, put it somewhere on your hard drive where it's going to be usable for you. Um, I put mine on my secondary hard drive, and that's fine. It doesn't matter where you put it, but I would definitely put it in your in a separate area on your hard drive, a separate folder called tutorial or whatever you want to call it. Don't put it on your desktop. You know, one thing you'll you'll learn to know about me is I don't like when people say, "Well, just download this to your desktop." Don't put anything on your desktop. It's stupid. It's unorganized. It's messy. And you'll end up with a desktop that has 500 million things on it. Look at my desktop. The only thing that's on my desktop is a recycling bin. I've got links to stuff that I use the most. And some things I rarely use, like Minecraft. I do that maybe once every three months. But put your links to your programs down here. If you don't know how to do that, there's plenty of tutorials on how to do that, but don't put things on your desktop. Okay, moving back into what this is about. Once you've downloaded and you've got this on your hard drive in a nice secure location, I'm using WinRAR. It's free and for the trial version or whatever. Use whatever you need to to, to extract it. You know, I'm not going to make this tutorial on how to use your computer. I'm using Windows 7 because I want to. Um, I'm just going to right click on it and I'm going to left click on extract to weapon tutorial and I'm going to let it do its thing. It'll extract all the files that you need to be able to run this project. You'll need to have you know your Epic Games Launcher up, pretty sure. Double click on the folder and you're going to go inside you'll see weapon tutorial which is a Unreal Engine project. All you have to do double click on that and you're good. It'll make the rest of the files that you need. It'll create the tutorial in the editor and you'll be ready to go. Now, I'm not going to cover a whole lot in this video. This is more of an introduction to what we're going to be doing and some things to kind of get ready for the things we're going to cover in other videos. Now, as you see, the first map you come into I'll pan around. It's just the third-person example map. I've removed the text from the floor and a little spinning uh, question mark. And I've added three guns to the project. If you click right over here and show everything, I've created a folder called Guns. I have an AK, a Glock 17, and an MP5. Those are the three primary weapons we're going to work with for this example. The only other thing that I have done is I have taken the animations from the animation starter pack. I have exported them and then I have re-imported them to work with the existing Unreal Engine 4 mannequin. So you'll notice in your mannequin animations folder there's a whole bunch in here. You got death animations, rifle, shotgun, pistol animations, animation blueprints, blend space, you got everything you're going to need to work with for having animations for your character to actually carry and use weapons. So that's awesome. Now there's going to be a couple things we're going to do in this video. They're not 100% necessary, but what I would like for you to do on this tutorial series is follow along and do exactly what I'm doing and how I say to do it. You'll do it and you'll like it. I'm kidding. Um, 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And you can see we're in the regular UE4 mannequin. You can jump. You can do all the same thing you normally do. Take a look at the weapons. I didn't make these guns. In fact, I think they look pretty good, but they're going to need some work to fine tune them. The Glock 17, the MP5, and the AK. Just something for you to look at for pretties for right now. What I have done with those guns is I've made sure that each one of them has the appropriate textures and materials for them to work. The meshes, you're going to have a skeletal mesh, which you can tell is G17 underscore SM. The underscore SM tells you that it's going to be a skeletal mesh. The STM tells you it's going to be a static mesh. So you're going to have your skeleton, your static mesh, you're going to have a skeletal mesh, and your physics asset. You'll have that for all of them. Uh, the MP5, same thing. And the AKM, the same thing. If you look in your mesh folder, you're going to have static mesh, because STM. This one right here, okay, I didn't rename that one, but all you'd have to do is left click on it, hit F2 on your keyboard, and we're going to call this AKM underscore SM, and that lets us know that it is a skeletal mesh. Kind of did this on purpose so we could show that. So that you can use that as a quick reference. You know that if you're looking for the AKM skeletal mesh or the static mesh, that's what you're going to look for. All right, moving on from there, let's go ahead and click on content. Come over here on the, the main side, I'm going to right click, and then left click on new folder. We're going to call this characters. And the first thing we're going to do as part of this video is we're going to go ahead and create a whole new character. And we're going to do this in a, in a kind of different way. I'm going to go into the character folder and I'm going to make a new folder called Mesh. I'm going to make another one called Textures. And then we'll make another one called Blueprints. And that should be good enough for right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the third person BP folder and inside that Blueprints and there we have the third person character. We're not going to use the third person character. So let's open up our characters. We're going to left click and drag to the blueprints folder. Let go and copy here. We're not going to move, we're going to copy. Now we're going to go into to this and we're going to left click on this again to select it. We're going to hit F2 and we're going to call this player underscore base. This is where we're going to make our changes to our character. However, we're going to do something a little bit different here, and we're going to create, we're going to left click, so we got selected, and we're going to right click on it, create a child blueprint class. Now, we can make a hundred of these, and they're all going to be one thing, they're all going to run off of that, and I'll, I'll show you that in just a second. We're going to call this green player. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit save all for right now. Make sure everything's saved. Now, if you look at your player base, this is where you're going to do all your movement, your your weapon stuff, your firing, your whatever. All your stuff is going to be done in this. You see you've got a bunch of stuff in your event graph. Okay. Now, you look in green player, there's nothing. There is nothing at all in here. Because what it is doing is this is a child of the player underscore base. All of this is going to be taken directly from what's done in your player base. So what you do in player base will work for every single solitary other one. So if we did the same thing, came over here, create a child, and we'll call this red player. If you make a change in player base, it's going to affect the way both of these two are working. So again, we're just going to save all. Now, we're going to create a green player. We're going to create a red player. And I'll show you the easy ways of doing this. So what we need to do is we need to come over into our mannequin folder, character, come over to mesh. Now, 
we have SK underscore mannequin is the normal skeletal mesh. We're going to left click on that and we're going to drop that into mesh and copy it. Now, for argument's sake here, what we're going to do is we're going to rename this one. Left click, F2. We're going to call this Manny Base. We're not actually going to use this for anything for right now, but we do need to right click on it and you can either duplicate or you can left click and control W and we're going to call this red underscore Manny and again we're going to click on there and control W and we're going to call this green Manny now we're going to go ahead and hit save all on those so they're saved now we need the textures if you come over here to your materials you've got two materials here inside the mannequin character materials folder I'm going to left click and then I'm going to shift left click to highlight both of them I'm going to left click drag them over and I'm going to select copy here on the textures folder now I'm going to go in here and while it's compiling shaders what I'm going to do is left click on it F2 and we're going to call this body underscore base and on the chest logo we're going to do the same thing left click we're going to F2 and we're going to call this eh, logo underscore base now, like we did before, we want to go ahead and left click on this, hold down control, hit W, and we're going to call this green underscore body, actually let's call this green underscore M for a material. Actually I don't like that. Let's call that green underscore body underscore M and now we have that and then we're going to do the same thing here left click on chest logo base or logo base control W and we're going to call this green logo underscore M and I'm just going to go ahead and hit save all and what we're going to do is we're going to double click on double left click on green body material it's going to load up and we're just going to hold down the right mouse button and scroll over to the right and you're going to scroll around till you find body color now left click on that we're going to come over here where it says default value I'm going to left click here and since we're making the green body let's come over here and pick a nice green color Let's make it a little darker. Let's give it a little little style to it. Eh, pull some yellow in there. Oh, that's good enough. Make it a lovely spinach color. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is you can see you've got the original color here and the new color here. It just updated the shaders. I'm gonna left click here and I'm gonna drag this to up here and now I've saved it here so if I want to use it again all I have to do is click it from there and I'll show you that here in just a second but I'm going to go ahead and click OK now you can click apply and then save but you don't have to you can just click save and it's going to apply it anyway see it's applying changes and then it'll go ahead and save takes a couple seconds alright hurry up I don't have all day all right, we're good. So now, green logo. We're gonna double click on that. We're gonna come over here. And see where it says body color. You need to click in that box so you can check the body color. We're gonna click right here, and then we're gonna click on our color. Click OK. Click save. And exit it. And we're done. We're done with that part of it. Now, come to our mesh. 
green mani. And over here on the left hand side in the material slot. I'm going to do it opposite. We're going to go to element one first. You can see what the actual chest logo looks like. And that's what's going to be in this slot here. So I'm just going to type in G-R-E-E. -E, so to look for anything with green on it. So let's click on the green logo. And you see it changes the logo in the center of the chest to green. Go to element zero, green, body, and there we go. Now we just have to hit save. And we'll do that one more time, and we'll do that with the red one. So we'll come over here to our textures, left click on body base. We're going to control W. We're going to call this red underscore body underscore M, so we know that it's a material for looking through folders later. I'll let it do its thing. On logo base, we're going to control W, and we're going to do red underscore logo underscore M. And now we're going to go into our red body. We're going to scroll over here till we find the base color. Click over here on default value. Let's find us a nice lovely red color. No, we don't want pink. Let's make it a little bit darker red. There we go. Lovely. So now we're going to left click over here, we're going to drag it up here, and we're going to add that new color to our palette. Click OK. Click Save. As soon as this is done doing its thing, we can close this window. Now, is all this necessary? Eh, not really, but we're going to use them anyway. Alright, so and what we'll do in a later video is show you how to switch between these guys. So we'll close that out, open up this one, check body color, left click on here, click here, click OK, click Save. It's just that quick to change the color of, of the uh, chest logo and uh, the body color. Now, we haven't changed it to the actual player yet. We need to come back over here, go to our red Manny, and this is in the mesh folder of our new characters folder. We're going to come over here, we're going to type in red for our body, red for our chest logo, and save. Again, those are there, but we haven't changed it on the player yet. We're still on the same right here. Now, what we're going to want to do here is come back over to our blueprints folder and we'll open up our red player, left click on mesh, come over to the skeletal mesh, bring the drop down box here, and since we're doing the red player we want to have red mini. We're not changing anything with animation blueprints, we're going to hit compile, we're going to hit save, good to go. Do the same thing with green player, open it up, if you get where it looks like this, Left click on Open Full Blueprint Editor. Left click on Mesh. Come over here to your Skeletal Mesh. We're going to go to Green Manny. Compile. Save. Again, we haven't had to do anything. But we still haven't changed our player yet. So, here's what we can do. We're going to start off with Red Player. Why not? I'm feeling froggy. Well, if we want to feel froggy, we'll be on the Green Player. So we're going to come over here to our world settings, we'll click on that, and we're going to come to game mode override, is none, I'm going to go ahead and bring it down to third person game mode, I'm going to left click right here on this little arrow, and we're going to open selected game mode. Now again, I'm going to go ahead and hit save all, even though it's not necessary, we're going to go in, we're going to look, hey, we're on the, the original off-white now we can come in here, go over to default pawn class, scroll down, since we're being froggy, let's select green player, we're going to hit save all, so we can save the game mode, and when we hit play again, we're now on the green guy. Yay! So, escape, get out of that, 
But what if we want to change it again? We can always go back to the original by going to third person character, or we can go to player base, or we can go to red player. In fact, let's go to, to the red player. We're going to save it. And now we're on the red one. Again, not 100% necessary, but it's a kind of a cool thing. I'm going to actually go back over to the green guy. We'll call him Kermit. Save all, save selected. And there, that's what we've done, is we've created a new character for us to run around and be in. And what we'll do later on is I'll create a little widget to where you can actually, we'll say, hit escape or hit a, a key on the keyboard, bring up a menu and let you change the color of your character at random. Functional, maybe. Cool. Okay, whatever. But as you see, everything still works. We haven't done anything to, that's broken the game yet. So that's going to get us going on that. The next thing I'm going to want to do is we're not going to be able to do anything in the mesh right here for the skeletal mesh. And yes, I probably should have put you know the, the same abbreviations, but we understand what that is. Come back over to the mannequin character mesh folder. Now, everybody has their own method of doing this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the skeleton. And I want I can left click on the right hand or hand underscore R and I'm going to right click on it because you can see it over here and it's highlighted. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to add socket. Now I'm just going to go ahead and type in the name, and I use this on all of mine. It's capital M A I N underscore H A N D, main hand. You have to remember the M and the H, if you're going to do it just like this, are going to need to be exact. So whenever you're writing this in in a socket location, you need to remember that. Now, for argument's sake, we can right click on the main hand. We can come down to Add Preview, and we're actually going to add in. And what the heck? We'll add in the skeletal mesh for the MP5. Now, as you see, it's not in the right place. So what we'll have to do is we'll make sure we let we're clicked on the main hand, and we can go ahead and rotate it. do what we need to do, try to get it lined up, make it look a little bit better placement wise. Not 100% crucial right now. We'll have to work on that later to make that work better when we actually spawn the weapon in the hand. And I would suggest turning off the uh, snapping here so you can actually get a little bit easier placement. And so take a, a minute or two just to kind of position it to get it close, but here's what's going to make it a lot easier. You're trying to get it to work with a hand that's open, it doesn't really work. If you come over here to animation, scroll down, and we want to find, I hate that it pops up that. We want to do an idle animation rifle hip. Yep, that sounds good. And now I'm going to hit pause because I don't want it moving around while I'm trying to position the gun. And now I can position the gun the way it's going to look in the animation itself. So we can get a little bit better placement overall. And again, this doesn't have to be precise just yet. Close enough. So now our guy actually has that. Now let's take a look at it. We're on the rifle hip. Let's actually look at um, okay when it comes up to iron sights, we can see that it's definitely not right. So we'll do a little bit more positioning. Like I said, we just want to get it close for right now. This is not actually going to show up in the game. You may have to turn off the um, rotation as well just to get it just right. Now, what we'll run into is you're not always going to have line up perfectly with the hand. And there are ways of fixing that. 
just want to get in general pretty close I'd say that's just I don't like the hand position there's a lot of things I don't like about the way this is laid out but you know what it's close enough for now what we're going to run into is we'll have to change animations later so the hand comes up to hold the gun better so we don't actually have it sitting too low so it looks like that or we'll fix the animations and we'll do all that in another video we just want it to come up and actually be usable I'm going to left click off so we can get a good look at it and you can cycle through some of the other animations just kind of get an idea of how it's going to look so we're good to go so we're going to go ahead and save that the way it is and we're going to go ahead and close it now that doesn't have anything to do with our character right now it's not going to show up in his hands in the next video what I'll do is we'll go ahead and make it to where we can spawn in we'll say the the mp5 and we'll get it to where it's physically there and then we'll do the AK-47 or the AKM make it to where it's physically there and we'll start setting up animations and things like that a little bit at a time so this video has gone on long enough and I'm sure you're probably bored of hearing me talk so we're going to close up this video like I said make sure you you get this pack you follow the instructions on how to set it up and do everything the way that I've got it set up so we're we're going to be on the same page here and when we get done the whole way this is going to work is we're going to have functional weapons that we'll be able to switch between and whenever I equip my mp5 great but if I want to put the mp5 away and walk around unarmed I can do that or if I want to put it away and grab my AK no problem it'll switch between the weapons and it'll store them on my back and same thing for the handgun we'll get it in a position to where it looks like it's in a holster and you can draw your pistol out and store your weapons and everything else we'll go through all the animations and make it all work and make it look lovely alright so with that thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video